two days ago I was watching Candy Cane Lane, the latest Eddie Murphy movie on Amazon Prime, and <sighs> that movie was bad. So that got me thinking, I'm gonna watch all of Eddie Murphy's movies and make a video talking about them, and I did that. I've watched so many Eddie Murphy movies, and after watching all these movies, I've never been more confused in my life. Eddie Murphy has had some of the best movies I've ever seen, and some of the worst movies I have ever seen. When it comes to Eddie Murphy, he's been acting for the past 40 years, and Eddie Murphy has revolutionized comedy, broken racial barriers, and became a cultural icon through his groundbreaking performances, and his cultural impact can be felt throughout Hollywood because of what Eddie Murphy meant to Hollywood, and because of the movies he took on in his early career, the black representation in Hollywood changed along with Eddie Murphy, and we can see him as a pioneer of many genres while also having great movies. Why does Eddie Murphy choose the roles he does? Why is it on one end he can have a phenomenal movie and on the flip side turn around and give us heart garbage? We can go from dream girls to a thousand words. His career has been an ever flow of confusion and interestingly enough, one of his most iconic roles almost didn't happen. One, can y'all guess what it is in the comment section below? And two, let me ask y'all, what is your favorite Eddie Murphy movie? And you can't say coming to America because that's cheating. That's everybody's favorite Eddie Murphy movie. But with that being said, come on this journey with me. Let's go down the career of Eddie Murphy and see just how his career has shaped from some of the best movies I've seen, like I said, 48 Hours, Beverly Hill Cops, movies that propelled him into stardom, and let's follow his career and try to get a better understanding of this cultural icon and what he means for not just black cinema, but Hollywood in general and breaking barriers. Eddie Murphy's first movie ever was 48 Hours, and it's one of his highest rated movies. I recently rewatched the movie, and I have to say, well, the movie does hold up, very well and it's still a good movie. The racism that was allowed in Hollywood back then would never happen today. I don't know what you're smiling at, Watermelon. Your big move just turned out to be shit. Like, this shit just can't happen anymore. But that just goes to show you the landscape of what Hollywood looked like and the cultural zeitgeist at the time that Eddie Murphy was beginning his acting career. And yet, he was still able to break that barrier. This is his first role and he knocked it out of the park. And he follows that up with a slew of other great movies. And one of the greatest movies he's done, one of the franchises he's most popularly known for is Beverly Hills Cop. And Beverly Hills Cop is one of my favorite movies because it launched my passion, my love for buddy cop movies. I'm a big buddy cop fanatic. You give me two homeboys riding around their car, hunting bad guys down, cracking jokes, man, you've got my money. I'm watching that movie. And watching him break that barrier and allowing for different iterations of the buddy cop genre to take hold. So we go from 48 Hours to Lethal Weapon to one of my favorite buddy cop genres of all time, Rush Hour. And all that can be traced back to Eddie Murphy's initial foray into the genre. And again, he's a comedian, guy to the buddy cop. Chris Tucker, comedian, buddy cop. We can see how his tree extends because of the range that he showed. And because these movies are actually good, it allowed us to view other up and coming stars, comedians, have you, that they can transition into playing some of these roles. That was Eddie Murphy breaking down those barriers. And his early success, his movies were box office. They were making money, they were good movies. They had messages around them. And speaking of messages, it's when we enter the golden era of Eddie Murphy, after he has his first few movies. And now we're talking about some of his best movies, Coming to America, Trading Places. Coming to America is a, the blueprint for a lot of movies to follow, as well as the movie that launched Samuel Jackson's career. Again, showing the cultural impact of it and the lessons that Eddie Murphy showed in that movie. And then we go to Trading Places. Trading Places was brought up in Congress and the plot of the movie is somewhat fairly simple, but that movie in itself, to this day, thematically is one of the most resonant movies he's ever done and for him to carry that range and for him to look at that movie, we see that movie as the movie of a has of have nots, which is the story that has been told throughout history. The Prince and the Pauper, diving deep into that 
and Eddie Murphy takes that, makes it in a more relatable way, and we can see how he has different comedic styles for different movies. The Golden Age solidified him as comedic royalty, and I'm gonna say this, Granted, it has a terrible review. This was the same era as Harlem Nights, and Harlem Nights is one of the best movies I've ever watched. That movie is funny as fuck. And fuck all the critics who give it a bad review on Rotten Tomatoes because that shit is hilarious and again, shows the range. Man, Harlem Nights, funny. Watch it, trust me. At this point, Eddie Murphy's on top of the world, untouchable, 80s, dominating but then as I'm watching it in real time well not real time because it's 2023 but like I said I'm watching all of Eddie Murphy's movies but I start to notice a pattern and there seems to be a shift when the 1990s comes around and the types of movies that he's doing and what Hollywood is actually going through at the time because like I said earlier some of the things they got away with in the 80s some of the jokes that were said some of just the language and the type of humor that was more prevalent kind of shifted in the 90s and the audience that was there before isn't there. Take that with the fact that Hollywood started to shift their narrative towards other types of movies where it started becoming more focused on sci-fi blockbusters. It's the 90s. T2's dropping and all types of action movies, Stallone, all types of movies. Wesley Snipes is coming in into his own action stars badassery explosions it's the 90s everything's super edgy and explosions everywhere and boom 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 and action stars galore and it's not to say that during the 90s eddie murphy didn't have some good movies of course nutty professor etc those movies also came out in the 90s but we could see that he started doing other stuff again at the same time dr doolittle's also part of that so we could see that eddie murphy shifting his tonality towards a more broader sense. Eddie Murphy's choosing his roles differently. Because of his dynamic acting range, he can take on more sci-fi oriented movies. He can do a Holy Man, he can do a Dr. Doolittle, he can do a Nutty Professor, which again, Nutty Professor is good now. Again, another example of even though Hollywood trends were changing, Eddie was still able to give us quality movies. But the types of movies that he excels at is not the type of movies that Hollywood as a whole is churning out nowadays because nowadays again it's about blockbusters in the 90s blockbusters early 2000s these movies spectacle was more the bang for your buck as opposed to comedy action and even though his movies were comedic or action oriented there was always a, a messaging behind them a deeper meaning because I started watching, even some of his terrible movies, they have meanings behind them. He always tries to give some sort of positive messaging behind his movies, which is honorable because Eddie Murphy's making way too much money to give a fuck if he's teaching his audience anything. But that goes to show the level of care that he puts into it. But then he chooses some of these fucking roles and it's like, bruh, why? And at this time, we can start to see a decline at Eddie Murphy's, not star power, but his box office draw, a lot of his 90s movies and early 2000s movies just, just not, they're not good. I want a cat for Murphy, but they're just not good. But talent always rises above the crop. And Eddie Murphy himself is talented and he's gonna rise. And we see a resurgence in his career throughout the mid 2000s when Dream Girls comes out. And Eddie Murphy at this point, Dream Girls might be his best performance ever. I still watch the scene. Dream Girls as a movie is pretty good, okay. But Eddie Murphy's role in the movie, his acting prowess, Eddie did the thing. Eddie won every major award except for the Oscars and we know he was robbed. I don't give a fuck. Like, I could make a whole movie of how Eddie Murphy was robbed but then it would take me down a deeper rabbit hole of how black actors keep getting snubbed at the Academy Awards and how they're trying to make up for it now but they're not really. And it's a, it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. There's no reason why Eddie Murphy does have an Oscar and Mahershala Ali has two. But again, I don't want to dive too deep into that and I like Mahershala so we're not getting into that one. But with Dream Girls, we see that Eddie Murphy still has it and he can still give us some range and not just comedic range, dramatic range like he his character moved me jimmy moved me in dream girls and that let the world know he's choosing bad roles i don't know if it's the check because we know how it gets like eddie murphy gets paid 20 million dollars a movie and as much as i love the art as much as i love making movies 20 million dollars is 20 million dollars so i could see myself making a pluto nash for 20 million dollars i mean you're not gonna give me an oscar anyway 
But we could see that Eddie has the range and he starts to make a comeback. We have a few hiccups along the way. His lowest rated movie of all time is A Thousand Words. And I saw what they tried to do in that movie. And that movie, I like to say, isn't as bad as Norbit. But again, that movie is one of the things that you don't want to be as a movie. That movie's whatever. That movie didn't elicit any hate or passion out of me. It got a zero on Ryan Tomatoes. I've never seen that before. A Thousand Words has a zero. Eddie Murphy, one of the greatest actors of all time, has a movie rated a zero percent because no one liked it. I mean, there's nothing to like, even though towards the end I understood again, Eddie Murphy chooses these movies. He has these messages that he wants to deliver. It's just the execution of those movies are terrible. But we saw a resurgence, Dreamgirls, Dolomite. When Dolomite came out, I lost my mind. Eddie Murphy was back. I mean, that movie was phenomenal. And again, it showed his range, his dramatic range. The fact that he could be comedic and dramatic at the same time as he could be touching. He could be comedic and an action star. The range that Eddie has really shows us that he can get critical acclaim in them when it comes to action and has a blend of both. Which brings us to Candy Cane Lane, the latest movie. After watching Dolomite, after watching You People, which not as great as Dolomite, but not bad. And now we find ourselves in Candy Cane Lane. How did we get here? Why? Why are we back here? Why after his research is Eddie Murphy making these movies again? And I went and understood why. Because after seeing that atrocity that is coming to America too, I couldn't understand for the life of me what the fuck. But then I found out Amazon gave him $100 million for coming to America too. And let's just say I understand completely why he made Candy Cane Lane 2, why he makes some of the movies he makes. If you watch Eddie Murphy's movies and you follow the timeline and you just watch it like a giant universal Eddie Murphy movie verse and you start to understand why some of the choices are made. It's not about his range, it's about the bag. And I ain't gonna hold you, I can never be mad at somebody for getting the bag. And ultimately, Eddie Murphy's legacy is what it is. Eddie Murphy has established himself. He's proved time and time again he's one of the best actors to have ever acted. He's proven time and time again he has range. He can give you some of the best movies of all time. He can also give you some of the worst movies. But the worst movies is not necessarily indicative of him because Eddie Murphy shows up, he does his job. Every movie that I've seen him in, like, he's the best part of the movie. Even if the movie's trash, he comes in, he can mail in a performance and he still is one of the candy cane lane. You can't tell me Eddie Murphy didn't just wake up, read the script and just start acting it like right then and there. He mailed the performance in Movie wasn't terrible, it wasn't great, but the legacy is what it is. He wants the bag. And there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm not diminishing his contributions whatsoever. Because again, if I'm getting the bag and every few years I drop gold on you, like I'm feeding the cinephiles, I'm giving y'all great movies. There's an audience for some of these movies, because okay, no, there's not an audience for them because they don't make money. But if Hollywood wants to give me money to make a Pluto Nash, Give me money to make a Norbit. Give me money to make a Candy Cane Lane or a Coming to America 2. I'm going to make it. I can't fault Eddie for doing it. But overall, that doesn't diminish the fact that his acting prowess is up there. That does not diminish the fact that Eddie Murphy is one of the greatest talents of our lives. And that doesn't change the fact that he has some of the great movies. So if there's movies that you like, take those movies, put them up against some of the better actors. Granted, they're going to point out some trash movies, but who doesn't have trash movies? Will Smith has been making trash movies for the past 10 years and we don't really talk about that because he gives us a few gems every now and then. But hey, that's just my thoughts. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and until next time, binge on.